welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have one, two, three good brothers. Ha 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 ha. We have the living Wikipedia of the temple and the and the man who and the self-proclaimed flamboyant flyer who's making his return after be after being several weeks late and fig. <laughs> good brother Flutter. We have the man, t the man guiding you through all of your VTubers, and could pro and could probably drink half of them under the table. Good brother Shades. <laughs> Toku's not here. <laughs> no, but um, given that his project is going to be wrapping up um, on Monday, we might be seeing more of Doku ne later, later, later this month, and possibly next year. So, I got yay. it. So Jesus Christ, how horrifying! <laughs> and last but not least, the CEO of Zadare Enterprises, the man of a thousand runes, and the bane of my fucking existence, good brother Xanatrix. Uh, our, our mech project is going quite well. We just need another few thousand test subjects. Um, what we'll be testing will be told to you upon, upon signatory of your non-disclosure agreement. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't realize you bought. I didn't realize you bought up Aperture Science. Uh, no comment. But Cape Johnson is a cool guy. Now that he's an AI. I mean, wait a minute. Nope. Nobody knows that he's in an AI computer. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that we did anything like he did with Carolyn. Nope. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but this is this particular one is one that is is one that's going to be very well timed. Given given events from a few months ago, and the and the fact that and the fact that the that the ser that the um, future of this particular run is up in the air, because I have I have I have been this is one of those things where it's been a while since we roasted an entire game studio. We've we've done we did that in the past when it came to certain articles on Monastery Live back in the day. But in this case, I wanted. I felt that there are that just because that there are certain people deserving of roast due to their presence in the unholy quartet, that doesn't mean that other studios are just as, if not equally, deserving. And this <coughs> week we have one of those studios, because our topic for the our topic for this week on Geek Watch is Nether Realm Studios: The Mortal Injustice of Errors. Now, I am I I will I will not sugarcoat the fact that I've that I've been a fan of Mortal Kombat since well two, um, and I am I am a I was always I was a staunch defender of the um P, of the PS2 era trilogy, which seem which seems to be horribly overlooked by a lot of people, that and Mortal Kombat four, which seems to be the um seems to be the third wheel whenever discussions of the of the franchise go around. But obviously, True. obviously, um, around around the PS2 era, Midway was on borrowed time because they were um, the chickens were coming home to roost over their own mistakes, and boy howdy did they make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> it's almost like Nether Realm Studios didn't learn. But then, but, but after after sometime after Midway went bankrupt, a bunch of a bunch. Of, Warner Brothers came calling, and a bunch and a bunch of the people involved with the with the former Mortal Co with the former Mortal Kombat games, up to and including Ed Boon himself, though what though how much of a, how much of a hand he has on things is debatable. And um, and I don't I don't even know if Tobias wanted to come back at all. But regardless, you have you have a brand new studio to make to make more Mortal Kombat. Happy to and supposedly a good time is had by all. Well, supposedly, they have well the well in the in the last we are not we are we are we are ten years removed from that, and it's hard it's hard to say that it's hard I'm not going to say that Nether Realm is a dying studio, but there's certainly a studio that has ha that has been growing identity problems. And it's 
I'm, in a lot of cases, I can't, e I can't even say that this is a dandy problem due to greed. Like, this isn't an EA or Activision situation. Though. <laughs> how, about, how about that, Activision? <laughs> <laughs> no, you gotta do it right there, Mildred. Hey! How about that, Activision Blizzard, huh? <laughs> but, you know, at the, at the very least, when they, when they fuck up, you can usually chalk it up to greed. I find it far more interesting when somebody fucks up and you can chalk it up to either arrogance or incompetence. <laughs> This case possibly a little bit of both. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> but I think we sh now. I think we should. I th I think when it comes to I think when it comes to this, the every story has a beginning, and the and the beginning for this is of course um, what was titled Mortal Kombat or Mortal Kombat 2011, but everybody just calls MK9. And. <laughs> I would I would say M I would, MK9 <coughs> seemed to be tr seemed to be trying to lean into the reboot that they were already planning with all the way back in Armageddon. It's just Armageddon was a bit of a rush job to say, to say yeah. the absolute least. They they were had such ambition for Armageddon, especially considering they were trying to literally cram in every single fighter from across the franchise into a single game and then to make it a rush job. Um yeah, there was inevitable that thing was going to be going to have problems. It's, mm -hmm. it's the reason why all of the arcade endings are shit. Yeah. Ah, oh, Monk, they're not shit. That's an insult to shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the sad part is, is one of those arcade endings is now canon thanks to MK9. Yep. <laughs> now, the I guess they the tested idea, their might and lost. The idea of the idea of do. I think we need to speak a bit on the idea of doing re of doing retcons or doing doing a reboot. I, I, as odd as this may sound, I'm not opposed to the idea of a reboot. What I've always been opposed to personally is the idea of a soft reboot. Because, in my opinion, if you're gonna, if you're going to do a reboot, you blow the whole thing the fuck up. Yeah. The um, Go ahead. the problem that I have had with any sort of retro retroactive con continuity for anybody who was wondering what retcon actually means, um, is only when it's used as a stopgap, when you've written yourself into a corner, even involving minor characters or side characters, mm -hmm. and so you just ignore what the past had or change what it had in favor of furthering things rather than getting yourself out of that corner in a different way that actually makes sense within the logic of your, of the world you've built. Yeah. Um, so when right. it comes to, when it comes to even reboots, I've, I've, I don't think that a full explosion is necessary, but definitely a restructuring from foundation, like what we tend to do. Yes. And to be fair, when you actually look at how Mortal Kombat has progressed since MK9, that is technically what they've done. It's a retelling of the story with changes that were slightly influenced by the events of the past, but now, at this point, the original continuity is no longer a factor in anything. No. Although, um, once it, as, I, as I find myself saying way too often, the devil is in the details, and this, re the, um, when it comes to when it comes to that idea of re of rebooting, this br this brings me to the to um one particular word that I think is very succinct when it comes to Nether Realm, and that is inconsistency. They're consistently inconsistent. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with an e I'll go with an easy thing on the in this regard when it comes to gameplay, like just the core gameplay loop has significant changes between all three games. Between between nine between nine and ten, um, not at not as much they, they added in the whole multiple they brought back the whole multiple styles thing and tried to expand on that, but oh, but we're kind of but kind of half-assed it in my opinion, um, and. 
what's more egregious is the fact that se that um several people's move set drastically changes between games. Even the even the in, even the inputs for several for several people's standard moves, you can't you can't guarantee is going is going to be the same between one game or the other. And yeah, that's true. You, you, yeah, you you can add moves or subtract moves based on character growth and things like that, but you can't just completely change inputs because then yeah that kind of that's gonna make it hard for longtime players to switch to this new game because they're like. Oh great! So everything I've learned, everything I mastered in combos and how to do all—all all that's thrown out the window because I got to relearn everything. Compare this with contrast this with say let's use, let's use the big example when it comes to Street Fighter. Like, but with with Ryu with Ryu's with Ryu's Hadoken, it is it is largely the same input throughout the whole franchise. Yeah, I can't think of a time where... and it's. Order circle forward and a punch. It, yeah, has, that, it has been relatively unchanged since the beginning. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's changed about it is uh, variations on uh, variations on its effects depending on what punch buttons you use, such as EX Hadoken being two punches because that causes it to come out nearly instantly and also travel faster. But yeah. that also came with games like Turbo and Super and such. Mm -hmm. But you right. still know the, the the main input is still oh, yeah. the same. So it's still it, quarter circle it, punch, it, yeah. Yeah, you, you don't feel like it's a drastic change that completely, you know, it's just like, oh, okay, so if I just add this to it, I can do more. Okay, you know, that makes sense. That's logical. Well, and if we go one step further, there's a movement, the little uh, four to down to down forward punch for the Shoryuken, or also called the Dragon Punch, mm -hmm. um, that is so ubiquitous to Twitch fighters, as they're called, um... That that motion is called DP for Dragon Punch. That, yeah. that motion is not called uh, anti air or anything of that nature because most of the time those those attacks are anti air attacks. They're meant to either catch somebody from a low stance or to catch somebody while they're in air. But it, it is so ubiquitous with the Shoryuken, so universal that when it's transferred to any other game. And mentioned in forums, mentioned in in uh, videos. If they're not using um, number notation, where where it says six two three for the dragon punch motion, um, it's just called DP and kicks or DP and punch, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it's standardized at that point. Yeah. Now, with the with that in mind. With that in mind, then we have we have one other we have one other thing that really highlights this particular inconsistency. There are s the, between games there's several instances where voice cast changes, and it is v it is very jarring to ha to have vo to have voice cast change just at, just within just within a long running series. <laughs> Regard, regardless of whether regardless of whether or not there the there was a viable reason for the for the voice cast um, change and you and when watching when watching long running series you tend to expect this kind you tend to expect this kind of thing just with just with time yeah but even but um go but going from one game having a voice cast to half of the to half half or even more of that cast being replaced to in the next game and the game after that Causes some massive whiplash. I think, uh... I think, though... I'm not sure. Correct me if I'm wrong. Was that only among the, uh... The... The English voice cast? Did they keep actors among other languages the same? I, nev I never played in any... I never played the MK games in any other languages, so I wouldn't be able to tell you. Okay, I... I remember, for shits and giggles, playing MK10 uh, with the Japanese voice cast on. It sounds a lot more, uh, a lot funnier. Let's just put it that way. I was doing it for the meme, and I certainly got the meme. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I, 
to, to give an example of what we mean by changing voice cast, I, I, I looked at several... I look, I'm, I'm on the wiki right now, because I'm going to be the Flutter for tonight. I was going to say, Flutter's you're here. not Flutter, we have Flutter. Hell, I've only, but, hell, I've only played one game of this trilogy, so I can't really do that. Yeah, but I pulled it up, and while... The uh, well, one of the more obvious examples would be Sonya Blade, and we will get to that. But a, another prime example of a character who literally has not had had a single voice character stick around, Kung Lao. Wow, Kung Lao has gone through three different voice actors in the trilogy. It was William Lee and and uh, no, uh, here, here we go, J uh, Jin Hyong and in Ken K Nine. Will Young Lee in MK10, and Suni Mahota or Ho Mahotra in MK11. Mm -hmm. Three different voice actors for the same fucking character. Pretty much. <coughs> and, and, <coughs> when, and when you do when you do that kind of thing, it's ve it's very hard to get, it's very hard to get inve it's very hard to get invested. Now, one of the other one of the other things that that they that they have that NetherRealm Studios has been boasting up a storm about for the longest time is that is their attempt to bring more their attempt to elevate narrative in fighting games which is an admirable goal two problems though one um i think arc system works has beaten them to the punch several times over on that i'm not saying that there's <laughs> I'm not saying that there's better stories but there's at least effort placed in more effort placed in the stories and if, <laughs> if, if we're being honest here, while uh, Guilty Gear is a fantastic game, um, even even with the newest sets of games, uh, you know uh, the the science, the Exert games, and then of course Strive, um, the story is batshit fucking insane. Um, and Blaze Blue, a much better. <laughs> Blaze Blue's a little more consistent. I'll be honest. But they're both good stories, as insane as they fucking are. Well, the, key, the key thing that I'm getting at with it, and of course, of course, when it comes to store, of course, when it comes to making an, making an effort to have some degree of consistency in story, well, SNK has been doing that for over 20 years. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, yes, the nightmare game. Oh. Anybody else want to fight Geese Howard? I'm good. I'm good. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like getting my ass kicked tonight. Thank you. Okay, fine. We'll just give you Iori. Boss Iori. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Monk, we've all suffered that particular... I'm not... You can't say I'm being penisy here because I'm feeling the same goddamn pain. This hurts me as much as it hurts you. You know what? That's the only reason I'm not hitting the button on you. <laughs> <laughs> but... The the problem the problem is they are the problem is they are terrible at it. T as, ter yeah. as terrible as, as terrible as a certain other story in games I'm sure that will t that we'll be getting into next year. Yeah, so, I've I've never I haven't played all three games. I've never had a chance to play MK10 or 11, but I've seen vi movie I've seen videos on YouTube of the storyline. What the fuck kind of story is this shit? It is a massive big the okay. The first game, it's a solid retelling of the uh, of the original of the original Mortal Kombat with some elements of MK yeah. two and three mixed in, mm -hmm. like it's kind of just con an abridged version of MK one through three, and with a bit of a twist at the end involving Raiden kind of just losing his fucking mind because of what he got what he got what he saw from the from the previous timeline. Mm -hmm. But once you get an MK ten. That's when things start getting a little odd. Now, MK10 was not bad. I mean, it wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. You know, it's kind of dipping more into the MK4 storyline with Shinnok. But, oh god, what they did to Shinnok at the end. Fuck. And then, of course, introducing a new generation of heroes who, by the way, most of them don't even show up in MK11. <laughs> Except for the worst one. Uh -huh. <laughs> the worst one? Um, when it comes... I've de I have been debating whether I have been debating doing a discussion sometime in next year about about the about the whole next generation next generation setup and why why it fi why it fails more often than it succeeds and I don't think it's I don't think it's because of the reasons a lot of people think it is 
I think yeah. I think the uh, when it comes to a lot of the when it comes to a lot of the new the whole next generation thing the problem the problem is especially in fighters they end up being glorified XPs of what came before just with just with personalities that are that um are not appealing yeah well and and then because they are glorified XPs they don't have any personality in play of their own no and uh, that definitely is a problem here. Yeah. The uh, just one last uh, note on that, if if I may. Um, if I personally had to give a reason as to why the next generation heroes fails more often than it succeeds, it's twofold. They don't set up enough uh, enough of a reason for the previous generation to go into that you know into the into the backstage and. They don't give a good enough uh, good enough passing of the torch. No. The, the investiture yeah. of will is not good enough. I can see the logic of that. But when it comes to stories, that brings us to Mortal Kombat 11. And oh, good Jesus H. Tap dancing Christ. This is where it goes completely off the fucking rails. Yeah. Uh, I want to point we... out what I want to point out. We'll get we'll get to MK11 in a bit, but I need to I need to set the the set the stage. So MK, MK9 came around, and that's and that's what I want to focus on first. The idea of it being a re, of a reboot and re, slash retelling of the of one through three, not a not a bad idea. The thing kind of comes apart at the seams because it's because because of the whole he must win mi, um mystery, which feels like a J.J. Abrams move. Because it because at the same time it's trying to do this t this um time loop thing and in the words of some call me Johnny time travel oh. is bullshit. Dude, you had to ask. I think I have that button actually. Oh no, I don't have that one set up again. Shit. Ah, that's always my luck. <laughs> but, uh, no yes, respect. But I've I've made it I've made it clear for I've made it clear for many years. Time travel is a minefield, and even stories that I like. Even even the likes of fucking Chrono Trigger are not immune to this problem. Yeah, they may have told an amazing story, but their time travel part, the time travel elements create a lot of plot holes. Mm -hmm. See, it, time travel elements only work if you have multiverse theory established in the same universe as well. And well, <laughs> this and well, when it comes to MK, they don't. No. Uh, as a side note, it's a reason why Majin Kaiser Infinitism actually works in Mazinger Infinity. Um, Majin Kaiser is sent from future Koji Kabuto to past Koji Kabuto to protect Koji Kabuto from dying so he can make Majin Kaiser. But it's also because Mazinger is infinite worlds and there's a bunch of multiverse theory. Yeah. Regardless. <laughs> the only, I've mentioned this in the past, but the only story that I've come across that didn't have multiverse theory that I that that um was able to relatively pull off time travel in its in its story was Primer, which was an indie film that came out in two thousand four. Yeah, but it also dealt in very small closed time loops. That's the reason it was able to get away, it's able to get away with it more than others. It isn't trying to is it isn't the time haters try, trying to go back in time to tell slave owners that they're crackers. <laughs> or be, or be, or ha, or have fuck you beating up on Hitler. No, it's t no, there's very specific rules and they and they follow them very closely. Yep. And that's I think I think we can expand that a little bit to say that this is just another example of what we mean when we talk about writers keeping consistent rules on the power systems within their worlds. Mhm. Mm yep. Now when it when it comes to, now granted mk uh, mk9 had had some significant changes one of the biggest of these being um sub zero being the one getting cyberized instead in st instead of his brother and that's a, that's certainly a major change and i'm like okay okay if that if that's the approach you want to go with it then fi then fine then but why though um for me with for me, it's a case of that's a bold. My attitude was that's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see how it pays off. But 
then you see then you see the but then you see the actual payoff because then MK10 comes along and Sub Zero's suddenly human again. Yeah. With the scar, with the scar from it with the scar from MK3, even though those aren't the same Sub Zero. And oh, and um, and Scorpion is human again for some other reason. Yeah, actually, also, no, it is the same. Actually, I got to I got to question call you out on that because that is the same Sub-Zero. The first Sub-Zero is killed in the in like the first part because, well, he has to. So he becomes Noob Saibot. That's the that's the whole storyline with that. Even in the original timeline, that was the case. Yeah. The, and so this was the second Sub-Zero that got cyberized. But yeah, I do agree that him suddenly no longer being cyberized was dumb. And the, the whole thing with. The whole thing with Sc with um, Scorpion becoming human again is equally dumb. Yeah, you 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 have a whole storyline right there on a silver platter for you to you know explore. And but no, they're just all human and now buddy buddy again, settling peace after all the hatred they've had for each other. And to be f to be fair, the that particular that particular scene, I liked it. I liked it on its own, but. But the but once you put it into the bigger context, then you end up having problems. And speaking of that, mm -hmm. there there seem to be two. Nether Realm seems to have developed a bit of favoritism when it comes to certain characters. In, uh, in, in particular, um, in particular, Devora, i.e. i.e. Bug Lady, who's probably someone's fetish. Yeah. <laughs> and Quan Chi. Because even even before Nether Realm Studios was Nether Realm Studios, they have been trying to push Quan Chi as a threat for years, and it's never stuck. He he's always just come off as kind of this like background planner. He he's just the tactician that just plays things out behind the scenes. He's never come off as the kind of guy that oh he's going to be the big bad. No, he he's hasn't. He, he's an ineffectual Xanatos in short. Yeah. Yeah, in a sense. He's not he's not a good Xanatos, he's a bad Xanatos. The pro the problem is I think for a lot of people they look at him and they see a poor man Sang Sh Shang Tsung. Which is basically what he is. <laughs> yeah. Necromancy and all. <laughs> yeah, right? I was I was gonna bring I was gonna bring up the fact that the fact that he has a different master, but no, you you still have the whole thing of tr of trying to usurp their master, even in that regard. Indeed. Yeah. Um, and uh, when it came when it came to when it came to game when it came, I'd say when it came to get when it came to um gameplay. Um, the other th the other thing the the other thing that I th I think is something that really hurted really hurts um that really hurts MK's ability to be ability to be played on streams and in tournaments, which is the reason why it got kicked off of Evo. Is the fact that, that that there has been more that as time went on there was more and more of an emphasis on cheap ass spectacle rather than technical skill. Like it, it they want they especially especially in eleven, where they ended up they ended up deciding to turn the traditional approach was to supers into glorified cooldowns. Uh. It, it, they, they they like they're the. When it comes to fight, when it comes to fighters, you've got either you know your hardcore fighters like your Street Fighters, your Guilty Gears, your Blaze Blues, and all that, and then you have your party fighters, you know your Smash Bros and stuff like that. The Mortal Kombat games have kind of just been in this middle ground that doesn't really fit either one, and thus it doesn't really appeal to either crowd. Yeah, oh, it doesn't. And I ha I've seen some I've I've seen uh, whenever when they started putting in um putting in those get putting in those guest characters it was like they were tr it was like they were trying to outdo the guest character thing that Bandai Namco has been do has been doing for like 20 years Yeah but the problem with Good that is fucking luck there when the problem is is that they did is doing it too much when Bandai, yeah. as weird as some of the guest guest characters that Bandai Namco has done through, say, the Soul series, it's usually just one or two characters. The only time it ever, the only time it really got out of hand was Soul Calibur Four, with all the Jedi characters and everything. With yeah. the with 
yeah, with three Jedi characters and a bunch of a bunch of reskin guest characters, who the whole gimmick was that they were designed by different manga artists. It was still fun though. That's that's the other thing. The guest characters feel fun in a in those games. The guest characters in in nine and XL, the two games I did play, uh, kind of felt clunky. I'm willing to bet, considering how many guest characters they put in 11, I'm pretty sure it's not much better there, because good fucking god, they just couldn't stop! Also, personal personal pet peeve point of contention with guest, the guest characters in the game, the Xenomorph does not act like a fucking Xenomorph at all! Fuck! Mm. I stand on my hind two legs and fight like every other fighter! No, fuck you! Fuck you and die! You want to know what's the sad thing? I'm pretty sure if you gave the I'm pretty sure if you gave the Xenomorph to Arxis, they probably would do a better job. You could give the Xenomorph to Nintendo and you'd get a better job. They did great with Ridley. Yeah. Yeah, I can't I can't argue that. Um. <laughs> I mean Ridley might as well be partial Xenomorph with that fucking stabby tail. And the fact that he, and and being ridiculously hard to kill. Yeah. But the pro the big problem that I ha the big problem that I had with the with the way things were pushed to to that regard is the lack of consequences. Because usually in a lot of in a lot of fighting games, the whole idea of super it is is building it up and then you and then using it as a, as a bit of a um a bit of a reversal or a tide turner. But if you misuse it, you're not going to be able to get it back all that easy, and you're going to be pretty vulnerable. Yeah. Um, I'd say an example in Guilty Gear is the fact that if you screw up on an, with an instant ki with an instant kill, um, in some of the early games, you don't get t you don't get your tension meter back. Yeah, when you uh, in earlier Guilty Gear games, we, you'd have to first go into destroy mode by hitting all four, four uh, face buttons, mm -hmm. and then once you were in there, if you missed with the actual input, if you input and missed with the actual movement or got blocked, uh, yeah, you didn't have tension for the rest of the fight. Mm -hmm. Which made instant kill made instant kills one a spectacle when somebody pulled them off, and two meant that meant that actually actually doing it was the, was the was the equivalent of going all in on the poker table. Yeah. Or if you knew that you could confirm it, because there were quite a few instant kills that had hit confirms. <laughs> you could actually get, if you could get the target combo off, you could actually change to destroy mode before getting the target combo off, and then straight into something like napalm death. <laughs> But the and the th I know th I know that it's t it's temp it's tempting to try to try and to try and re to try and reach for more casual fighters, but you don't have a ca but you don't have a casual audience. I mean, obviously you're an M-rated game, so trying to have a casual audience is gonna ha is gonna have a barrier no matter what you do. Yeah, and and this is where we kind of see a little bit of that party like the party fighter influence in the form of the X-ray attacks. They that only was the do. First warning. Yeah, that was the first warning sign because the X-ray attacks were kind of that first sign of this. You know, for those who've never played these games, and quite frankly, good on you. The X-ray the X-ray attacks were slightly stronger attacks. They were they were they weren't as powerful as a super, but they weren't exactly a normal attack. But what they did was they they added the spectacle, as you would slow down the fight for you to zoom in on these attacks that literally would. Go into an X-ray of the character taking the hit, and you would see their bones shatter in different ways. Some of which is like, how did that not kill you? You mean like the times where some X-ray attacks put explosives in their heads, but don't actually kill them like a fatality does? Yeah, or or like when you see that like a massive concussion that just completely breaks open their skull. I'm like, how are you not dead? Which brings me to something when it comes to fat when it comes to fatalities now. Obviously, fatalities have been, have been a have been a staple since day one. They were the ultimate fuck you to your opponent and a good amount of shock value. But as time they were also go ahead. I was gonna say they were they were also the primary reason we have the uh, ESRB. Hmm. <laughs> but as time went on in the in the Nether Realm games, the uh, the the set the setups for fatalities. It's like they were trying to cram. Three or three or four different fatalities into one, 
and and with bl- and with blood that look that looks less like blood and more like half melted jello. Yeah, I, it it seems to me like this was another. This is one of the early signs. This was another case of desperation from Nether Realm because between the at- bon- all the guest characters in this, it just seemed like they were so desperate for people to pay attention to them. The the fatalities just got more extreme, more gruesome, more over the top. To the point of ridiculousness, like, I, I call this the Ed 209 effect, and how ironic, considering RoboCop's in 9K11. <laughs> it's the Ed 209 effect. It gets so ridiculous, you just can't help but laugh at how stupid it gets. Yeah. Except with Ed 209, well, at least with the, ri- at least with the original film, that was the joke. Yeah. It worked there, and that's the kind of, the, you know, a lot of other franchises have d- taken that idea and ran with it. Hi, Dengen Rampa, how you doing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but here, yeah, it, it's just, it stops being funny after a while, and it just starts cutting, getting sad. It's like, okay, I get it, I died, what the fuck? There's also the fact that for, pe- for people who want to be completionists, especially with, especially with the inclusion of Challenge Towers and later on The Crypt, um... You're going to be seeing those fatalities a lot. Ugh. Kind of desensitizes you after a while. Well, it's more it, it it's more of the it's more of the fact that you're wishing for a skip fatality button just so you can get to the next match. At the yeah. Very, or or tr- or try and pull off brutalities because at the very least those are quicker. But when it came now when it came to the when it came to the narrative. Before we, I'd say before we get into some of the bigger parts with the, with the MK narrative, I want to take a bit of a segue into NetherRealm's fascination with DC, and to be quite honest, if you if I was to compare Capcom's relationship with Marvel and NetherRealm's relationship with DC, Capcom wins out, even with some of the yeah. duds. as much of a dud as as MVC Infinite was. I would take that over, over and over, um, and over any of the, of either of the MK versus DCU game, game attempts, or even the Injustice games. And the big, when it came to when it came to Injustice, I I find myself I find myself very disappointed in two forms. One, the ca- the um character desi- the character designs and the costume designs this is something i've railed on for many years and i'm probably going to keep railing on when it comes to superhero designs until i'm dead but designers you don't need to you don't need to try and justify your superhero design by making it look like power armor all the fucking time yeah I, I'm looking at the characters for the first, just for the first injustice. We're ta- not talking the le- second, just the first. And I see maybe three characters that look decently designed. Four, like I think you can Sinestro. See the, I think you can see the over design I'm talking about, though. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Freaking Aquaman, Ares, Bane, Batman, Superman, all just ridiculous. The only four characters that I see that are decently designed: Sinestro, the Joker. Green Arrow and Black Adam. Everybody else, good God. And also, the, also the whole chin thing. I realize, I real, and I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to, I'm not going to single out Nether Realm in this because um, Jim Lee, Jim Lee was just as guilty of this shit in, in his during the early days of New Fifty Two. But what's the, what's the point of what's the point of the chin armor unless you. The only way, the only reason I can possibly justify that is if you're, is if you, is if it's the connector to some kind of helmet, or if it's. To be fair, to be fair, looking at the characters here, this wasn't a problem with the first injustice because all the characters in the first one, like the only character that has anything akin to chin armor, is Cyborg, is Cyborg and Batman. Yeah. It got it got worse with Injustice too. <laughs> oh, within well, Justice Two, it's not even a question. Yeah, the, the character it got ridiculous over there. But I'd say one. I but the reason I say the reason I say I'm disappointed in a very I'm not mad. I'm disappointed kind of way is we yet we once again have yet another story of 
so of what is of alternate universe, but Superman is but Superman is evil. You know, because we yeah. haven't run that we haven't run that into the fucking dirt in the last forty years. Yeah. And how when it com and there consider consider how many alt consider how many AU stu stuff involving Superman ends up doing this kind of thing. Let's let's run let's run a short gamut. Now, the Dark Knight Returns is doesn't count for this. He wasn't evil in that. But let's see, Justice Lords. I'd say we ha that's a I'd say that I'd say that counts. What with Superman being a fascist. Um, yeah. Superman Red Sun starts out starts out good and then and ends up ends up going down worse. And it's a re and you know things are bad when Lex Luthor is the good is the good guy. <laughs> In one hand we have Superman was a fascist. In that hand we have Superman was a communist. Mm -hmm. In let let's see. Oh yeah, Kingdom Come. <laughs> With the massive ass body count of that particular that particular show, I'm not not sure what am I talking about that particular comic, um, and there and there's been I would also br I would also bring bring up um, Crisis on Two Earths, but that's a tricky situation because it because we have full on alternate universe, not slightly different alternate universe set up like we see in Injustice. Yeah. Like literally, the only the only the only difference between the main universe and the Injustice universe is the fact that Superman accidentally kills Lois. And th that's an, that's another thing that I think is something to highlight. Ever notice how in a lot of a lot of AU stories you end up with with large body counts? I think it says something about the writers sometimes. <laughs> You can have. Don't get me wrong. There's plenty of AU stories that don't involve massive body counts, but it's kind of off-putting that it happens so often. Yeah. And when it comes to when it comes to injustice of all the of all the stories you could have told, that's the that's the one you end up going with, and you end up trying to double up on ha on having prime and regime versions of the entire cast, or at least a, or at least a Good, at least a good amount of the cast, and still having them play exactly the same. It can it kind of remind it kind of reminds me of that whole, of the whole clone character problem that re that really got out of hand with certain fighters. I know some people will bring up um will will bring up all of the all of the ninjas in Mortal Kombat or all of the or all of the Ryu and Ken clones in Street Fighter. But no, if you want to see the real big offender when it comes to clone characters, Budokai 3. Uh, Much as I love... Budok uh, uh, go ahead. I was going to say Budokai 3. Hmm. How many versions of Goku do we need? <laughs> oh, God fucking Christ. Oh, and also, while we're on the subject, fuck Toei Animation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm well aware that I'm well aware of that whole thing. And yeah, just, I don't need to. I, I know most people are already aware. We don't need to say any more. Yeah, fuck Toei Animation. Yeah, but as much as and don't get me wrong, I I like Budokai Three, but I and I and I love seeing some of the more interesting mods that people have put up with it. But I'm get, but I still have to call a spade a spade. Yeah, and when it when it a lot of people. When it comes to a lot of when it comes to a lot of the mechanics that were introduced in um, Injustice and later on with Injustice Two, the 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 way that the way that the control setup was overhauled and on paper, I don't have an issue. In pra in practice, it doesn't it does mean that you have a whole lot of specificity that makes it almost impossible to do any sort of competitive play with. Because of the because of the fact that you have to t that there, you have to take into account um, stage gimmicks as well as individual gimmicks that each character has. There's a, I'd say there's a reason why why a lot of fighters don't really bother with that and try to go for as as unifying of an arena as possible. I think it's also the reason Final Destination became so popular in Smash because of the fact that there's no that there's no gimmicks. 
Yeah, that, that that's something that just, like, that's another thing that kind of puts Netherrealm on this, like, middle ground between a, a hardcore fighter and a party fighter, is that, yeah, they add all this extra stuff, and you have no way to avoid it. Like, if, if you're in that stage, guess what? You're dealing with those gimmicks. You don't like it? Tough shit. Which, on paper, I don't I don't have a problem with that. I mean, I love Smash, and I love Power Stone. But the pro the problem is you can't ha is if you want to be a casual fighter be a casual fighter if you want to be a har if you want to be a hardcore tournament kind of fighter then do that you can't do both now when it came to when it came to st when it came to um sto when it came to story with ten I'm sorry actually let me let me pause there because there's one of the reason the reason I'm only talking slightly about injustice is First off, the you have you have the fact that the whole evil Superman thing I've seen done to death. <laughs> I think we're I think we're all pretty much sick of it to the point where when the boys came around, I rolled my eyes and going, "Oh joy, another evil Superman." <laughs> Let's be fair though, that one was really good. Oh, uh, season one of the boys is great. Season two a little le a little less so, but that's because they were spinning too many plates. But. The f but the fact of the matter is is that is that this is that this is this is a mot this is a motif that's been done to death, and then you ha and then you then they tr they tried to course correct a bit with Injustice Two by bringing in Brainiac, but the focus should have been Brainiac is coming. We need to put all our petty shit aside and and prepare for him, and that isn't what ha that isn't what happened. Not even close because Superman is still a dick. Yeah, <sighs> Professor Geek has gone has gone on has gone on quite a bit on this, but a big re a big re a big um fallacy that happens when it comes to Superman as a character is this idea that he's t this idea that he's OP and need and needs to be taken down a peg in order to, in order to be a proper character. The problem well, with we... that attitude <laughs> is that you're tr you're trying to you're trying to. He is supposed to be an aspirational hero, not a cathartic one. Pretty sure we've had a discussion on this on a way old episode of Geek Watch. Yeah, we did. <laughs> but because of the fact that it keeps coming up, I, I, it's something I can't ignore. Even, even with, even with Superman XPs. Oh, and I'm pretty. It's. It's one of those, it, and I'm pretty sure we'll, I'm pretty sure we'll end up getting this when we get to when we get to discussions about characters that are way too that are way too powerful for context versus powerful characters. Period. Yeah, though you, you know it's sad when the one parallel to Superman in any other medium that's been able to actually get it right was fucking All Might. Yeah, that <laughs> that is. <laughs> There's no question. That's a Superman parallel, and they do it right. <laughs> he stays a symbol of hope for till the very fucking end. Mm -hmm. That and that and coming off coming off like he just popped up right out of the Silver Age. He does. Holy shit! But anyway, mm -hmm. don't want to go too far off rails here. Yeah. But the now I I have I have seen some arguing that the that the design when it came to inju when it came to injustice. Was trying was trying to lean towards the design of um, DC Universe Online. That's not exactly a compliment. Wasn't a fan of the designs in DC in DC Universe Online either, and that game's in maintenance mode. So if that's your best argument, then you might need to rethink it. Keep trying. But then we get to the one that. That uh, then we get to the one entry in Netherrealm that I have been dr I have been dreading that I knew I was going to have to talk about when it comes to all of this insanity. That being MK11. Ugh. Now one might think, wait, wait, we're only we're only less than an hour in, and al and already you're getting to that main event. Yes, because there's a lot to dissect. I don't have compared to not compared to nine and ten and the Injustice games. There's not a whole lot that I have to dissect when it comes to errors, just general stupidity. Eleven though goes o goes way over the top on this. It, it takes unlike... all the problems of all the other games and then cranks them all up to eleven. Mm -hmm. 
And unlike the state of Oregon with a beached whale, we are not dissecting using dynamite. <laughs> no. I wish I was, though. Um, yeah. Now, first, first off, the when you can when you consider how the reason why I wanted to do that bit, that bit of rant earlier when it came to fatalities is because of the is because of the stories that we ended up getting about a about a year or so ago regarding um regarding cr regarding crunch and people getting PTSD from the from having to look at actual gore. Yeah, like the, the, I mean, this is even brought up on Wikip on the actual Wikipedia for Netherrealm was that yeah, one developer detailed stories about how the team would view pictures and videos of murders or animal slaughter as reference material, which inevitably would cause nightmares and eventual insomnia with a diagnosis of full-on PTSD. Let's not forget that this is in addition to long crunch hours and be and um and being in a neighborhood like Chicago. Chicago's worse than nightmares. So yeah, that's that's basically a nice little cocktail of oh god, the therapy bills. Mm -hmm. Think what? they should have hired more people who had been on 4chan for too long? <laughs> you know what? That might have actually worked out better in the long run. Just get people who can draw that are from from, from 4chan. Have them look at the gore, and the, and the answers you would get are, this is really tame. Where did you get this? <laughs> but even even with that, I, and I want to point out that this is where the, re, this is where the um, nadir of the casualizing comes in, because instead of doing the super, you have, a, you have an offensive and a, de and a defensive um, gauge, which do not fit, which you would think would fill kind of like the EX and revenge... And uh, revenge gauges in Street Fighter Four. No, they just fill up on their own through time. They're glorified cooldowns, which, make, which um, as I mentioned before, completely kills off any kind of consequences for missing. The only consequence being time. Yeah, and if somebody if somebody knows how to play defensively, they'll get they'll get it they'll get it back within the within a good amount of time. The other the other major gimmick that they brought in was the fatal blows, which were which were meant to be were meant to be these super like attacks that you could do when you're at thirty three percent health. And once again, there's once again there's no penalty for missing other than the fact that you're at low health, which in my personal opinion is n is not enough of a consequence because well you're going to get a chance to try again after a few seconds. Yeah, I mean, make make it a one-time thing. You know, it's a desperation move, so make it that desperate that you have one chance to salvage yourself from this near-death experience. And if you miss, well, you lose. Yeah. And inc incidentally, even when it came to uh, even when it came to the ridiculousness of the um, of the fatalities, they can't even stay consistent with that. For example, having char having characters like Frost have guts. He's supposed to be a fucking cyborg. Oh, but oh, but they managed to get a cyborg skeleton right when it came to when it came to the Terminator. Because apparently they put more effort into the guest characters than they did their main roster. Yeah. Uh -huh. Or, I, or even or even even give even giving um. I even get even giving um gr even giving red blood to people to people who should not have red blood. But they'll but they'll be perfectly willing to give it to their what to their wife they'll give blue blood to their waifu Devora or or not or um, green blood to spawn because they know they have to. And even and even with even with that, the la the lack of the 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 consistent inconsistency rears it rears its head with the with the fact that. They end up that they end up using similar um ex similar expression models for fatalities, even if the even if it doesn't make sense for the character. Like say, having ter when ter when um ter when Terminator shows up, and having him um have pain expressions on a fatality. I'm a, a fucking machine. <laughs> <laughs> Arnie doesn't even make pain expressions in the movies, so I mean, no. like, 
Why the fuck would he make pain expressions? Mm-hmm. Or you know, some something to get something to give characters some per, some personality. But I get I guess I guess all that money was spent was spent on tr- was spent on trying to lure Ronda Rousey to play Sonya Blade, even though they had a perfectly good voice actress in the in at least one of the in at least one of the games prior that they could have used. And incidentally, Rhonda, I'm pretty sure you could kick my ass, but um, never voice act anything again ever. Please. I don't think I'm asking much, am I? No, no, I don't think you're asking much. Yeah, I. Uh, speaking of, uh, ca- we talked about guest characters. There, I actually was, I was actually double checking. There's like six guest characters. Hell, you can bump that up to nine if you count the can- the actors from the Mortal Kombat movies coming back to reprise their roles for Shang Tsung, Raiden, Sonya, and I believe it was uh, Johnny. Mm-hmm. And the the whole th- the whole thing of br- of bringing these people back and using that as a selling point. A lot of people a lot of people celebrated that kind of thing. I didn't because to yeah, me re- that's str- that's that reeked of desperation. Yeah, exactly. Like that you don't essentially, um, essentially the idea that you do, that you don't have enough faith and you don't have enough faith in the cast that you've been building, so you so you have to so you have to keep bringing you have to keep bringing up nostalgia in more ways than one. So let's talk about the fucking time quake, and some of the worst time travel oh. BS that we've talked about. So oh. the whole the whole gimmick in this is. Having is having characters meet meet some past incarnation of the of themselves. Basically, re, basically um, redoing the MK2 cast, absent of all of the development that that some of the characters have had over the years, especially characters like Johnny Cage. Yeah, like MK10 showed that Johnny Cage could actually be. A good, a seriously good character. You gave him such great development in MK10, and that's saying a lot considering how many problems that game had. But it, it, one thing it did do was it made Johnny Cage not seem like a complete arrogant dick. And then here comes MK11 with past Johnny Cage coming in, being an arrogant dick again. Yeah. The, and when it comes, to, and maybe if maybe if you, you maybe if you use this to do, to do to do some sort of uh, some sort of reflection on who some on who somebody was, you can certainly do that, and it's been done before in the past. But in doing this kind of thing, you end up ju- you end up character juggling to the point where I may as well play saber dance because of all the plates you're spinning. Yeah, and that's not even mentioning what happened to poor Sonya, because uh, here here's the thing. So again, Sonya had learned to soften up a little bit. I mean, she still was not happy with Johnny because they got a fucking divorce or something in MK10. MK11, they had finally like by the end of that, they had patched things up and things were looking good. Then current Sonya gets killed off at the beginning of MK11, and all we get is past Sonya who's just being a bitch again. Mm-hmm. I and with with all with all of this, you have. You have the you, what it really ends up. T- what it really ends up telling is there is a sec. There is a section of either the fan base or the developers or both, who refuse to let the zeitgeist era um, go and have to keep trying to call back to a t- to a time that doesn't match all that all that's developed over the over the past thirty years. Mm, does that sound familiar? No, <laughs> not at all. Hell. Look at Liu Kang. There's another good one because, oh, God, what the, you know, there's a case of, you know what, maybe it wasn't such a bad idea after all because what the fuck did they do to Liu Kang uh, thanks to the events of 9 and 10? They turned him into a fucking zombie lord. I'm, I'm, a, I'm actually not, a, I'm actually not opposed to, first off, the zombie Liu Kang was done, was done in the, t- was done in the tail end of the, of the Midway era. And I'm yeah, I am aware to, of that, but <laughs> I'm not opposed to it. On, I'm not opposed to it on paper, especially since there was that big focus on the revenants. The problem that the problem that I the problem that I have is the, is the fact that, is once again the fact that instead of ex, instead of exploring these new takes on the characters, 
the only the only one who they who they seem to want to do any sort of exploration with is the is the more corrupted Raiden. And even then they still fuck it up because we have a past version of him. Yep. Though at least with Raiden is the one character who's been consistently voice acted the entire time because Richard Epcar is a fucking badass and don't anyone ever try to argue with me on that. I am not <laughs> arguing about the anime dad. <laughs> <laughs> Were we arguing but, about that again? <laughs> <laughs> but like just so so much and and oh I, I cannot wait till we get because I know we're gonna have to talk about some of the other this is like another major player in this particular uh, game. Oh, I'm going to have words. Oh. <laughs> you have words? Heaven forbid. <laughs> but when it but when it comes to the, when it comes to the whole, the whole thing of of bring of bringing in past characters, a lot of t a lot of times because of because of the fact that you have the you have these two different sets of the same character for a lot of people, I could say this is going to get very confusing, especially given a certain storytelling engine that Netherrealm has been using for the last 10 years. I hate the chapter system. I hated it in, I hated it in 2011, and my ire has not changed since. I get the logic behind it. It's allow it, it, it will it, it, on a paper. It allows you to try different characters, different play styles, switch things up, and keeps the game from getting stale. But when you're when, when you're playing a fighting game, you know who you're good with. You're gonna want to stick to those characters, and not being able to do so just becomes infuriating. Especially if you end up getting stuck with a character that you just cannot play with. There is certainly that, but one of the bigger problems that I have is the arbitrary ad attitude of one character per chapter, period. Because Which, whole... from a storytelling aspect, kind of basically railroads the story. Even, especially, especially when you're dealing with consequences of characters who, who the character you're playing as is not going to is not going to have that strong of an effect. Exactly. Um. Do you remember? Do you remember what? Jay, do you remember in the Disney era when there was that insistence on do, on doing the on doing the word get doing the word gimmick for episode titles with Power Rangers? Oh yeah, yeah. It's oh it's that kind of, god, it's that kind one of, of the, bottlenecking. One of the yeah. worst instances of arc words I have ever seen in my fucking life. Ugh. And. Now, t now to, bit of, to put a bit of contrast, the idea of a of a sing of a single campaign that co that covers multiple characters is not in itself a terrible idea. Um, in fact, Dead or Alive Five has done this. But the thing the thing with the key difference is that they don't is that they don't do this whole one character per cha one character gets a set of fights as as their chapter. Um, arbit arbitrary approach. It jump it jumps around to what's appropriate. They still have the problem of having of having to potentially play a character you're not going to be good at, but at the very least, there's a bit more. The, the narrative flows a bit better in that regard. It's yeah, it not, does. It's not perfect, but it's an improvement. Yeah, here you're literally like when it, when when you're on that chapter, you only play as that one character. Even if you like, I want to see what these guys are up to. No, you're playing this guy, and you're gonna like it. There's a, there's also an odd thing of cer certain chapters involve two characters, and yet none and yet none of the tag rules that are in the main game get used. It's always you pick you pick one character you pick one character and then do a standard one on one when it would make more sense in the narrative. <laughs> Especially in, for example, in the chapter involving um, involving Scorpion and Sub Zero, that to do it to do a tag fight. Exactly. Yeah, because a lot of their fights they end up fighting two opponents. Like, why don't you just let us have a tag fight with that? That would be awesome. It no. would. No, you pick one. The other guy goes off to fight the other guy, and you're stuck fighting the one that you're supposed to fight. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. As well as as well as the fact that ca that characters like Cyrax they have they have the full models for but but for some reason weren't playable. Ugh, just well, uh, that's to, that's to keep it so that they can unlock it in DLC later, Monk. They it's never monetization. did. 
I know, but that's <laughs> you know that's the reason. Yeah, that, that's the excuse they'd make. Oh, well, it is not not exactly an excuse. It's oh, we're gonna do it to to sell it to you piecemeal, and then they never do it to sell it to you piecemeal because they just don't give a shit anymore. Mm-hmm. They've made their money. You're no longer useful. Well, that and the, that and they they'd ra- they'd rather they'd rather reminisce about the about eighties movies. <laughs> which is fine and all. Which is fine and all. When you do it for a majority of your of, of of like when when the majority of your guest character base is eighties movie characters, especially uh just why? Yeah, yeah. especially so Hell. those licenses don't come cheap. Exactly. No. Hell. What the fuck was even the point of adding Joker here? Okay, now that actually makes sense on two fronts. One, their relationship with DC and Injustice 2. Secondly, the Joker was all played in those games by Richard Epcar, and he's already doing the work for Raiden, so why not throw him in this? It's the same reason why, it's the same reason why Sub-Zero showed up in Injustice 2, because one of the other characters was voiced by Steve Bloom, so why not just throw in Sub-Zero while you're at it? <laughs> <laughs> I would ar- I would argue in that regard why ex- why exactly um Hellboy was an injustice or why why the hell Sp- why the hell Spawn is in- is in M- was in MK11 well, Yeah that's a oh, more it's question totally it's like sense. It- And they actually managed to get Keith David for Spawn which by god I know, and again, right? he's not exactly that hard to get a hold of. I mean, he's freaking in the Saints Row games. I don't think he has that much aversion to playing video game characters. No, no, he more than likely doesn't. Not just is he in the Saints Row game; he's in the Saints Row games as as both an actual character and himself. And himself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will never get over that. That was so freaking amazing. But regardless, yeah, like, and like, yeah, they didn't just get the characters in a lot of cases they got the original actors to come back like they got robocop and they got peter weller to voice him as and as nice as that is from a fan perspective it's once again all i all i see when i see that is mis, is a misuse of resources because that same amount of money which i cannot imagine being be, being being a pittance could have been could have been applied to refining characters that you already have and sure, uh-huh. you're you're gonna get a few eyes on you for those characters, and you're gonna get on a few, a few mag, a few magazines, but 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 that is a that is a short term gain, right? And the same and the same problem can, and the same problem can be attributed to them shilling out ass loads of money to get the um, likeness rights likeness rights for. The T-800, which, while yes, that is supposed to be Arnold as the character, the fact that I, I get that they I get that they couldn't get him to come back because I believe at the time he was still like finishing up filming on Dark Fate or something. But uh, if you if you want to if you it's 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 kind of like I'm trying to trying to find the right word uh it's wasteful it's wait yeah yes yeah, yeah. it's wasteful if you just well you could have spent that money to, to help develop a lot of the second gen characters that you had you know yeah sure cassie got a lot of development maybe you can give some love to jackie too in this one but takeda and kung jin like they hardly did anything in these games yeah i think and i think at least one of them had a move set that w- I think it was Kung Jin who had a move set that at least was doing something different from his parents. Because a full-on archer is certainly is certainly a step is certainly a step removed from Kung Lao. It yeah. is. That's more than just one step removed, Monk. Come on. Yeah, my my point is my point is, um, Ca- Cassie Cage <laughs> play, plays plays way, plays way too much like her parents. And the same, and the same goes for Je- for Jackie Bridge. Yep. Well, Takeda's just as bad too. He's basically just a non-blind Kenshi, mm-hmm. which um, takes away from the point of Kenshi being a badass. I I I hesitate to say that he plays like Kenshi too much. Those those whip blades in his arm things 
Are, uh, right, fair, fair, fair. But still, like... It's from a design standpoint, he comes across as like a, Ken, a version of Kenshi who has basically take has has basically had all the badassery siphoned out of him because no, he you know what it, he's, a, he's basically a mix of Kenshi and Scorpion, which is yeah. his dad and his master. Yeah. It's- on one hand, I can understand that narratively, but on but from a gameplay perspective, there's no you can just because just because they have the, those um those partic those particular um lineages does not mean that they have to be an ex be a full on XP as much as what happens with a lot of those. No, characters. it doesn't. Now, when it comes to and when it comes to uh, when it comes to a lot of the a lot a lot of the a lot of the narrative. The fa- the fact that you the fact that you have a whole lot of overlapping and a lot and I mean a lot of retcons to the point to the point where trying to establish a continuity even within this trilogy is pointless because there's so- because there's so many branches and I'm someone who's able to put up with all the branching timelines in the Legacy of Kane series and I find and I find the br- I find the branches and retcons in the Nether Realm games to be excessive. And well, let's be honest with the uh, with the Legacy of Kane series. Those retcons and branching timelines actually serve the story. So that's the difference. Well, the, the big difference is that Amy Hennig isn't a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, still sad that we'll never get another Legacy of Kane game. Mm-hmm. I am, but I'm also I'm also laughing that I'm also laughing that the Last of Us game that she didn't write ended up becoming cock hunting. Uh, anyway, getting back on track. If we're going to be talking about characters in Mortal Kombat 11, I think it's time we talk about the elf in the room. Okay. Oh, fuck. Let's talk about Chronica. I want to point oh, out a bit about... of a laugh that I had. Okay. Um, in the lead up to MK11, Ed Boon... Had to- had talked up a storm about how about how they were breaking ground with the first female villain in fighting games. What? <laughs> what? Uh, hi, King over there is wanting to say hi. Let's see, King Durrell. Um, <laughs> so there, I'd say I'd say I'd say a good I'd say a good hand a good handful of Orochi's followers. You know. In, yeah. Eno has been an antagonist since she was introduced. Mm-hmm. Yeah, technically so... you could say that. Uh, depending on which Guilty Gear game you're looking at, uh, Milia is also an antagonist. So, yeah, but I'd say I'd say Eno is the big example of is the big example. Oh yeah, that. no, that bitch, that bitch be crazy. Uh-huh. That bitch be crazy, and she looks so good in Strive. And here, and here's here to add to his to add to the bullshit of that statement. When you actually look at Kronika. I, I have to go full on. Uh, is that that's a woman? <laughs> I know, right? Ugh. Well, the, the actually before we get into Chronica, that brings me to that brings me neatly to a little segue I'd like to make. That being <laughs> the design. That being the designs. Uh, hold on one one thing before we get to designs, Monk. Well, the most important part. Uh, first female villain in all of fighting games, Kronika. Did they forget that in their own fucking series, they had Sindel? Oh, exactly. Okay. You know what? Since you mentioned it, let's let me get to her because um, because with when they brought Sindel back, they managed to piss me off. <laughs> oh fuck! Because. Sindel is one. It has has one of the more tra- has one of the more tragic um, stories in the Prime universe. Had one had. of the more tragic backstories. <laughs> had and S- Zan, since you're as familiar with it as I am, you mind giving the cliff notes on that front and why she, she... why why she became a popular character because of this. Um, Sindel was essentially. Uh, what's the best way to put this? Portrayed as this woman who tragically died because of uh, oh, 
I'm sorry, Monk. I'm drawing a blank. My brain's hurt. All right, all right. Let 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 me step in on this one then. Yeah. Tag because in. here's <laughs> Tagan. So basically, she started out as the queen of Edenia, you know, uh -huh. the same realm that birthed Katana. Of course, uh, her. You know, unfortunately, it was re it basically as early as the second game we found out that she got killed by Shao Kahn after he basically won the Mortal Kombat tournament there and took over Adenia. However, once Shao Kahn lost the second Mortal Kombat tournament in MK2, he had he was pissed off and had found but found out there was a way he could cheat the rules and and invade Earthrealm using Sindel. So he basically resurrects her and turns her evil in order to open up a gateway to Earth. Mhm. Mm so now you have Katana having to fight her own mother because in order to help close the gate because well th this is wrong. There's everything about this is wrong. But then in the new games they She was evil all along. She was yep. evil all along and they wanted to make and they thought it would be more empowering to have her and Shao Kahn be a power couple. Yep. What the fuck? Yeah, you didn't yeah. know that, brother. Yeah, in MK11, they reveal that she had that's the only reason she uh, claimed to not be wanting to marry Shao Kahn was that she was lying to keep the Aden the Adenians uh, loyal to her. Yeah. <sighs> and I, d I just that's not her. how you write a corrupt. This is <laughs> that is not how you write a despotic villain. What the fuck? <laughs> Hey, um, he almost, he almost sounds like me during Heavens and Heresies, except in the opposite direction. Oh. <laughs> Shades, Zan, I think Flutter's gone by by Egon. What do you got? I'm sorry, <laughs> currently beyond the capacity for rational thought. Not that I've gone, I've gone by, but it's like. Dude, you fucking broke. Don't even lie, you fucking broke. <laughs> Man, this is almost as bad as Emergence. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you who don't get the joke. Uh, you're the lucky ones. Yes, you are. <laughs> I'm not dignifying that any further. But I do remember one of the writers try, trying to pull, trying to trying to pull the all all these angry fans are sexist, and I I do remember calling him out on that on that front. It's like, no, no, we're not. No, we're not. You're just an idiot. Um, how how is the fact that we don't want Queen Sindel to be evil a sexist thing? It isn't. The, I remember some people trying to stand this and making the argument that they that, that we just wanted a, pr a princess uh, in in dis, yeah, you know that, a damsel in distress, which doesn't no. make sense because she never because she never was and there and there's she very, was never in distress. She was dead and then an evil zombie. Yeah, exactly. yeah. It, we we would have loved we wanted Sindel back as a badass who who stood up to Shao Kahn in the group. That was what we wanted. Now, since 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 I've de now when it comes to the designs, um, this is this is this was where the straw man of boner culture ended up coming f ended up coming from because a lot of people really were not happy with the way the designs were being toned down over the years and MK11 espe it especially. I I I was all but the funny thing is I had said multiple times that a lot of the designs felt o felt over designed. Like there's too there's too much stuff going on. A good yeah, uh, character design will usually have a well. If you you look at you look at character you look at character designs in in manga in superheroes even in even in live action works and there's usually one or two at one or two distinctive things that are going that are going to be telltale signs of that character. Now look you, at you know what go ahead sorry. Uh, I think we're, I think we're about to do the same thing, comparing characters. Yeah. I've I've seen I've seen some people say that say that uh, the argument that they tried to use was was that it's un was that it's unrealistic for for someone to be good someone to be going into a fight in high heels. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm gonna fight that argument right here because let's go back to Sindel for a minute. Mm -hmm. You know. Sindel's like uh, hold on. I you get I'm obviously you guys can't we can't show this on screen, but the original Sindel had a 
kind of this like this purple and black one piece suit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it was very. It was actually very conservative. I wouldn't exactly call it a great design, but it wasn't exactly sexy in any meaningful way. Then you compare that, and this I, I can show you guys this. Take a look at Sindel in MK11. Anyone who's saying that they were trying to tone down the sexiness is lying out their ass because Sindel looks sexier in MK11, despite the over-design, than she did in MK3. <laughs> yeah. I, would, I would also like to argue this is a game about interdimensional battle sports where people commonly transform into dragons, turn into other people, steal souls, throw fire, and summon the dead. It's un- it's unrealistic to go into battle with high heels is immaterial when you have a guy who can trick shot his bullets off of thin fucking air. Exactly. <laughs> Asking for realism in this in this universe is quite frankly asinine. Okay. That is. I've heard I've and, heard realism and, and practicality be used be used interchangeably, and in both in both cases, I um I my. Re- I always, I always, I always end up jumping in, going. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I interrupt your concentration? I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> oh, you were finished. I... Well, allow me to retort. Verisimilitude. <laughs> Ver- verisimilitude, yeah. I, my, uh, my response with specifically when someone mar- starts making high heel arguments, because that's a really weird one. Always. <laughs> Very much so. What the fuck. <laughs> All I do is I bring up screenshots of uh, Ryuko versus Satsuki in, in fucking Kill a Kill. I'm like, high heels are impractical and unrealistic in a medium that is impractical and unrealistic. Who would have fucking thought? <laughs> <laughs> Calm down there, Zane. You're about to lose it. I can feel it. <laughs> I hate I mean, this argument. Probably more than the monk does, and that's <laughs> that, saying something. You, you know what? Zay? I'm not disagreeing with you at all. I am 100 percent behind you on this. One. I'm just saying, calm down before you burst a blood vessel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, if I bl- if I burst a blood vessel, I hope it gets in their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do this like a fucking horned lizard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> But <laughs> what, I, what I do find, what I do find, um, one of the, there's two, there's two major problems I have with, I have with the, with, um, with the way things were designed from game to game. One, once again, you have, you have a lack of, you have a consistent inconsistency. Since from nine to ten, someone like Sindel, okay, you, okay, you can see where things are going. Um, but some, but, but some characters like say Jade. Feel like a complete 180 in term in terms of how they're presented. Oh yeah, this. And this or decision. I'd, I'd say I'd say one of the bigger exam one of the more egregious examples of this kind of thing is Scarlet, where she was all. Uh, hmm. I hate MK11's design for Scarlet. <sighs> because. Uh, don't get me wrong. That outfit is actually pretty cool looking. If we're being honest. But the change from 10 to 11. It's like, but why though, guys? There was absolutely no reason for this change. Oh. Other than my sexism. Which um, it is. It is. Um, it's ironic. It's ironically a bit. It's ironically sexist that that. That they that they that all that a lot of the male characters are running around with no shirt, whereas all the all the female characters are not. Yep. Um, and, and of course, when I do say uh, MK10, I'm I'm specifically talking about her position in the comic. Yeah. Because she wasn't in the actual MK10 Which, game. I believe. Incidentally, that brings it that that calls into another thing that we're not we're not exactly fond of, and that is. Um, <laughs> Transmedia Side materials narrative. that are necessary. That are necessary. Mm-hmm. Um, transmedia narrative is the term that um, be- that I've heard from Bellular and a few others. 
and but I've always argued that if done properly, uh, transmedia narrative can be good. Looking at you, Yoko Taro. <clears throat> I love his transmedia narratives. Oh, it can it can be, but it but the way to do it wrong is when transmedia narrative is needed in order to fill holes. Yeah. Yes, like the Mortal Kombat 10 comic. Yeah. If you use it to expand upon things, great. If you're using it to fill in gaps that you left in, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Very example, much so. By the way, uh, example of, of Scarlet's uniform in the comic in uh, Geek Watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that looks good. And it's appropriate for someone who is a bl who utilizes blood magic. Yeah. Yes. So then why, why is she... I was going to say, why does she look like a, a desert uh, commando in <laughs> K-11? And, and again, that over design. Look look at how like freaking busy this thing looks. Yeah. It's very busy, but I still like the general de design of it. It's cool as a general design. Too many little bits and bobs. Yeah, like you, you, you keep the blood pack, the the blood pack that she's got on her on her waist, but get rid of those other little knapsacks on her. You don't need those. No, you can probably, you can probably even get rid of the blood pack on the waist and just keep the vials that are on her thigh. Yeah, you can you can do that. Yeah, and then the, the way it's all wrapped up, just make that to like make it make the wrap that is the because it's very clear that the red wrap is over some sort of leather bodysuit. <laughs> But then there's in. also, yeah, you know, if instead you, of making all these layers, yeah, if you, <laughs> if you need the red wrap because because Scarlet is well red, just go with a red, just go with a red and black bodysuit. Yeah, that too. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think they're doing a problem with that. Uh, but these now when now I I know I got I know I got a bit sidetracked, but when it comes to Chronica. The once again, you have a problem of 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 them having having all of this love for a for a character who uh, who bar who barely do who barely does anything. And it, first of and, and sorry, his ahead, plan is pa well, pants on head, retarded in the words of Yahtzee. Yeah, I... first of all, introducing another villain after we've already got like four or five of them just in this new timeline alone, not to mention, hi, Ona uh, Onaga sitting back there like, am I any part of this? You know, and then like you said, yeah, she literally just, she doesn't even fucking do anything until the very end. She just lets everyone else do all the work and she just sits there gloating how she's going to take over time. It's it feels it feels to me like it like a case of someone not understanding the chess master type of character. Clearly. So, I uh, I really don't like that she that uh, Chronica is um, is clearly I might add a uh, an an, an, a, an attempt to expand further upon the celestial denizens just like the expansion of the elder gods that we had gotten previously um who followed the one the the one being above all which apparently exists as well because she's the first if i'm not if i'm not mistaken she's the first mention of any sort of titans also why did you name her chronica and not just use chronos which is a neutral gender neutral greek name technically exactly because i guess they needed the k in there well they, they st chronos starts with k properly in, when when transliterated from greek to to anglicized lettering it should be k r o n o s chronos yeah. if there's anybody I feel bad for in that regard it's jennifer hale because she deserves yeah. better than being associated with this. She I mean, does. she does deserve better than being associated with this thing, but I have other reasons to have issues with Jennifer Hale as a person. I won't get into that. <laughs> yeah. But the but introducing introducing the concept of of Titans when we already have the gods, el elder gods, and the one, and the one being is oh, is once again overkill and once again um gimmicking gimmicks. Mhm. Mm but more moreover the idea the idea of the idea of her, of 
of her of her whole of her whole plan to re to restart the timeline and the reasoning for restarting the timeline is is um really stupid. Because Raiden threw out the bearings of good and evil. <laughs> I need to reset the world because it's all Raiden's fault. That's literally what it boils down to. Mm -hmm. God. <sighs> and yet, and yet, and yet, and yet, for some reason, she needs for some reason needing that needing that particular crown in order to in order to go with her plan. For some reason. Apparently she has to... Apparently the crown is the only thing that can control the, the device for the sands of time. It, it's as dumb as it looks. It and is. Well, if, I want, the, if I want or... sands of time, I'd, ra I'd rather play Prince of Persia. Right? Mm -hmm. Also, design-wise, let's talk about that for a minute here. Now, not as busy as some of the other characters, but uh, state of your shoulder pads... What the fuck? You've never seen her spiky shoulders? Oh. Why are they angular? <laughs> what? Be because reasons. <laughs> also, no hair. Um. Yeah, what the fuck? And a golden skull plate just kind of looks... <laughs> yeah. Like, like... She's supposed to be a fe a female villain. That's all cool and well. Literally, her entire design is as androgynous as can be. Like, like I said, that's a woman. Like, if you had exactly. told me Chronica was non-binary, I would have believed it. Agreed. If you told me Chronica was non-binary, I would have been like, "What are we? Uh, are we pandering now?" <laughs> well, give, well, I would agree with that too. But still, well, given the, given the given the statement I mentioned earlier, I think I think we've already crossed that threshold. The answer is yes. <laughs> no. uh, I think uh, what the, I think what those shoulder pads are supposed to invoke is the upper half of an hourglass. Honestly, there's better ways. To oh my god, hourglass. they they are. I I know there's better ways. I know there's better ways, but that doesn't mean that I don't understand where that came from. Exactly. It's still fucking stupid. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is. You, you know. There are okay, so there. We're 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 still talking about you know, character design here. Why couldn't they have gone? Like all of these are super busy, but most of them look a lot better than that thing. Why couldn't they have gone with one of these other, uh, character designs? I, I was yep. just looking at that. I I would say maybe the the last one. A little that busy, one's all covered but... in clockwork, clockwork, which gets the whole time thing across better. And it does. Yeah. I'm going to be honest, we haven't had enough clockwork time villains. Yeah. The last one I remember is clockwork from <laughs> the Sly Cooper series. <laughs> I mean, the, the other the other ones are either too similar to the main, to the to the final one, like the first two, and then the other three in the middle are just like, good God, do we really need all that shit hanging off of her back? No. No, we did not. <laughs> There's this is this is the epitome of not understanding what the fuck you're doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that's that's not that's not a slagging the artist, but more of slagging the lack of an art direction. Yeah. yeah. Or the and of course of of course of course the what makes it even worse is that the. The bulk of the bulk of the villain work that's that's done in her grand plan is done by Garrus, not him, not her, not her. Yeah, there's a Freudian slip if I've ever heard one. <laughs> yeah, Garrus, a guy that just qu is as bland as bland can be. I mean, I get the I get the idea of hi of him being of him being a construct. Who somehow also has guts in his fatalities, but well, but we've already covered that. But yeah. all that all that I see is just a weaker version of the Warden Eternal from Halo Five, and I didn't like, and I did not like the Warden Eternal. And in both in both cases, this idea of this of of this um of this bad guy who keeps coming back 
but that but never ch but never changes how it how he works. Um, contrast this with say the three the rule of three when it came to, when it came to bosses in the original Devil May Cry. Let's go let's go simple on this and let's bring up Phantom. All three times that you fought Phantom, he did not use the exact same tactics. Yeah, he changed things up each time. Mm -hmm. And same goes for Nello Angelo. Each each time you each time you fight him each time you fight him, um, he ends up adding some new trick to his arsenal. Yep, each time you fight him, he's a little less motivated to fight fair. <laughs> <laughs> but the point the point is is that the, is that um if you're gonna have a character if you're gonna have a character. Um, get beat, get beat, and come back repeatedly. In that regard, at least do, at least do something to show that he's learning from his defeats instead of him just being the Petey of the dog. Yeah. Now, when it comes to, when it comes to the, when it comes to the whole idea of, of the of the balance being changed and 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 those kind of words, I'm reminded of all the stuff that I hated with Zolval, where. Where when it came to trying to explain his backstory, it, it talks about how he defied the first ones when it came to reality, but it's never explained what the first ones were. And when it comes to the whole balance of balance of good and evil and all that, um, first off, if Ra if Raiden turning heel is what upsets the balance of good and evil, then I, there are several questions that I have. Secondly. If, the, if 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 um if you need if you need to maintain maintain that maintain that time flow, um why did you why did you bring why did you bring back past versions of characters? Yeah, it very much defeat it very much defeats the purpose of trying to protect that time flow. Mm -hmm. And th and third. If, third, if you're if you're if you're supposed to be you're supposed to be this titan with this with this grand plan, why is why is it that why is it that um that we never that we never see you actually making plans? We see we just see we just see your agents doing all the heavy lifting while you sit in the back. Exactly. You know, as much as I hate as much as I hated Quan Chi, at least he did things. Yeah. yeah. Here, Cetrion did more work than fucking Kronika. And and Cetrion, <laughs> and Cetrion, I just I just called a damn hippie. <laughs> you know, shit. Even dressed like one with all the leaves and everything. Jesus. I mean, she is the goddess of life, everybody. And yet, she's trying to kill you. <laughs> well, monk, as most of the uh, major philosophies around the world go, there cannot be life without death. <laughs> <sighs> but then we get, then we get to an ex an experiment that I hope to God no other um fighting get no other fighting game franchise tries to repeat with aftermath. Mm. Oh yes. The whole side story bullshit. It was intended to be a "quote unquote" sequel story, and yet ends and yet ends up creating a whole host of new problems. It very much feels like the sole reason it exists is to get is to give screen time to Sh to Shao Kahn's actor. That's mean Shang Tsung. Yeah, Shang. Yeah, yeah Shang Tsung. It's the problem. It's the problem when you have similar syllables all over the place. Things get messed up. Yeah, they were just basically trying to, uh... They were just basically trying to give, uh... Kari Hiroki Tagawa more to do than just be, like, in this little mini-game vault thing that they did. Mm -hmm. Which, honestly, considering how that story went from what I've heard, well, yes, it's a good... It's a good idea... It was a good idea to, to have him reprise his role... Why just basically do the side story thing and and frame it around him when you have 
all these different other all these other different characters, including one that hasn't been seen since MK4. <sighs> And when it came to, I'd also let I'd I'd also be remiss if I did if if I did if I didn't po if I didn't point out that once ag once again we have major change we have major changes to characters and I have to ask myself is that e is that even going to be a f is that even going to be a factor? Um. I'd say one. I'd say one of the bit one of the big examples of this of this kind of thing is the is Liu Kang as the fire god. Mm. Yeah. The big Deus Ex Machina. <laughs> Deus Ex Machina. Just God. Oof. And the I, the I when it com when it comes to when it comes to all th when it comes to all three of these games, um, in in my not in my not so humble in my not so humble opinion, the way the way that um, MK nine, ten, and eleven, and the way in and to a lesser extent the way the Injustice games were ma were made, um. Makes me makes me wonder if if um if people if anybody at Nether, anybody at Nether Realm ever did work for Haim Saban because they both fall into the same problems. Chief among them is tr is trying to chase as is you have on one hand higher ups trying to chase a zeitgeist of the of of the of the past when it comes to the glory days of the original trilogy, as well as a fan base that wants that wants everything to be like MK two for some reason. And on the other hand, you have you have this you have people trying to make a genuine attempt to adv to advance a, to advance a narrative forward. But it, but we have to re we have to reset it all because we might alienate new players. Which, as an aside, I'm get I'm getting really sick of the new of new players being used as a crutch, both in terms of fan bases and in terms of game designers. Yeah, it, it it honestly like you're reaching for an audience that does not exist. Mm -hmm. If you focus on the players that actually like your franchise, they themselves will bring in new players. Like, yeah, this game's awesome. You should try it. You should play it. That's how it fucking works. That's how it's always fucking worked. Get it through your thick fucking skulls. Word of mouth is a thing. And when it there's a and even with that the I the idea of trying to chase a casual audience for what's supposed to be a hard what's supposed to be a hardcore game is all is always going to be self defeating, and trying and trying to trying to mix in um trying to mix in pop culture characters into your mythos is going to create more problems than more problems than it solves. Now, I w it and I'd say I'd say a perfect encapsulation of this is. It is in the more is in the um twenty twenty movie. Actually, twenty twenty one. Yeah, twenty twenty one. It was supposed to be twenty twenty, but then well, we know what happened. So yeah. And I want I want to make clear my thoughts on on that movie. Is it as bad as Annihilation? No. Is it as good as the original movie? Also no. But what but what really stuck out to me was that was um. Instead, is using using the character of of Cole, which at which at first I wasn't a fan of, and the re and the reason the director gave for focusing on this brand new character, um, were was kind of dumb, because they thought for whatever reason that people wanted Johnny Cage as the protagonist when nobody asked for that. And he never, and up until MKX, he. Was. By the, by the time Johnny Cage was a was a protagonist, quote unquote, in the MK series, he earned it. Yeah. But M but MK it but introducing but introducing Cole, it's like 
okay, okay, I'll we'll, I'll go with it a little bit of him being the of him being a descendant of of um Han, of Hanzo Hisashi. I mean, it's get it's a bit it's a bit of a stretch, but I'll take it. And as time goes on, you see that whole arc with him. You see you see them. Tr you you have a whole thing about the tournament, except there it except there isn't one, except there isn't one. A whole lot, of, a whole lot of exposition that is just unnecessary. But I'm kind of, I kind of expect that from bad action movies these days. But just at, just at the third act, when you think that he's, when you think that he's finally going to have his big moment, dealing, dealing with Sub Zero, and he finally gets the upper hand, get, getting his own, getting his own set of equipment and everything. Nope, he gets, co he gets cock blocked by his, by his ancestor. Yeah. Cause we gotta have Scorpion versus Sub Zero, you know, you can't really go without that. And you've gotta you've gotta have the get over here line from Ed Boon. Even though it's even though actually, they... actually Ed didn't dub didn't um dub um He didn't they've been using Sonata <laughs> over. No the you're, that is that is correct, but what I'm what I'm pointing out is that whenever they whenever they use that line in the games, while, while and not have the voice actor use it, it always sounds really off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. When they used it in the original Mortal Kombat film, it felt out of place, mm -hmm. but in a good way. Fair in that movie. Yeah, it's just like yes, call back to the games. Thank you. But I find I find that to be a very a very apropos encapsulation of Netherrealm's pro of Netherrealm's problem of chasing the past, or this or this idea that we that we can't move forward. We have to keep we have to keep bringing up the th the things from before. The problem is you're never gonna do as well as as well as what came before in that regard. So you what you should instead be doing is trying to is trying to build up a future. This is the this is the reason why we end up why in a, in a lot of our reconstructions and a lot and similar matters, the idea of passing on a torch is something that we focus on a good amount. Granted, some of that is because we're ripping off a of Riku Sanjo, but hey, if you're gonna steal, steal from the best. Exactly. <laughs> also, I, also I've always been a fan of the concept of legacy heroes as as a whole, but. The fact that the fact that they couldn't let Cole have his moment because they needed to have the Scorpion versus Sub Zero fight, even though even though even though it comes right the hell out of nowhere, with the only explanation of hi of him escaping from hell, which yes he did. He very much did. But it but the sole reason it's there is so is so that is so that fans of the games can po can point out the callback. I look at I look at it akin to somebody jingling their keys in front of me, you know, to try yeah. to try and distract me. And mm -hmm. once I see it that way, I end up getting pissed off, as anyone naturally would. Yeah, if you if you had to have this, if you had to have Sub Zero in or er, Scorpion in this scene, if you had to have that fight, fine. One, you could always do a flashback. That would save you the trouble. You get the fight. And you get some chance to learn about the history of the two so that Cole's involvement becomes a lot more sensible. Or if you have to have him in the present day, have him show up, fight Sub-Zero and get his ass kicked, and Cole comes in for the save. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, which, well, yes, they technically did that in the, in the fight, or in the fight scene itself. By the time that that Hanzo shows up, it very much becomes a one-sided battle. Which, I can understand, it's two-on-one, but come on! It's like, you're really just gonna, just gonna have, have these, have this, this character who, well, yes, they did explain why he's here, Basically, we forced the team up with his with his ancestor as a means of curb stomping his rival. Mm -hmm. Just that shouldn't work. That's, that's not that's not how you set up a 
a new generation care a new generation story like this. Because it's like you you start off well with the flashback in the beginning of the movie, but then you very much fumble at the goal line. Ugh. Well, that that and introducing this Arcana thing that it that comes right the hell out of nowhere. Yeah, basically like just a branded type of birthmark that le that leads to like Cole getting this that allows him to beat the ever loving fuck out of Goro of all characters. Yeah. Now. At the at the time at the time we're recording this, we are a few months removed from the, from them, essentially ending the the um, DLC support for MK11, and it is up it is up in the air whether or not whether or not an MK12 is going to be on is going to be on the horizon. Although the rumor mill is is implying that the next thing coming coming around the pipeline is going to be an Injustice Three. The prom the problem that I the problem that I have with either one of them is in the case of an in if they did Injustice three, the big question is what's what sort of what sort of um villain do you are you gonna use because you still need to you still need to, you it, you are in a no win scenario because if you focus on the reg the regime universe, well you've got a bunch of assholes. If you focus on the prime universe, well the, well, there's a whole, well. It's a case of why didn't you do that earlier, right? And and even more so, what vi what villain are you gonna pull? Are you gonna pull out? Because um, it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be extremely trite if you pull out Dark Side again. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know that's exactly what they're gonna do. Like that's the only other major villain they've got left to pull out of their ass. It's gonna I'll I'll put money down if it isn't Justice Three, it's gonna be fucking Dark Side. I'll call it now. There are some villains that they could possibly use, but they, but, but, um, given given the impact of the Snyderverse, I could see them trying to latch onto that and and pull in dark and pull in Dark Side and possibly also Steppenwolf. Yeah. It'd be it'd be really stupid to do that, which is the reason why I could see it happening. Especially since, especially since Dark Side always been on the dumb option. Yeah. Especially since Dark Side's a villain that you need to build up. Which and and from what I can gather, neither of the first two games have done have done that. So nope. it is very much it is very much come across as an ass considering how Dark Side is. Now, if they end up doing a Mortal Kombat 12, um, the thing that the th once ag once again they're back they're back to square one because you have a new you have a new era with it with a, with a continuity reset. Yeah, but this I don't know if you can get a Mortal Kombat 12 from the ending that everybody from either of the endings from if we're looking at at aftermath. Because yeah, you really one, can. One is Shang Tsung conquers everything, right? And in Fujin are, are, are his uh, are his uh, bitches, and everybody else is dead. The other one is Fire God Liu Kang recreates the universe <laughs> and meets his ancestor, the Great Kung Lao. But then that still means that whatever he creates, his new era, it's likely not going to include all this Mortal Kombat bullshit. He's not going to want all that again. No, he isn't. So the only, so the only uh, the only way the only way you can go about this it, it is <laughs> is but is by completely retconning aftermath, which once again that's another retcon in a game in a game franchise that's already drowning in retcons. Exactly. <laughs> that's monk with Mortal Kombat 11. That's another retcon in a single game that is in itself the epitome of retcon. With that much time travel fuckery that just doesn't work, it's all retcons. It's 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 retcons all the way down, Monk. In that re in that regard, let's let's su let's suppose, for instance, that a that aftermath ends up being retconned alone, and we're just dealing with the with 
the with the canon after effects of eleven on its own. Okay. Um, I mean, but where do you go without the whole? Oh, Chronica's crown was needed, dude. Uh, that started aftermath in the first place. I get the feeling that I get the feeling they'd be dumb enough to try a do, to try a do over of aftermath story and call it MK12. A big longer aftermath story with more people. Aftermath 12, bigger, longer and uncut. Ah! Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, South Park would then make fun of them for using the same joke they did. They would. It would, welcome it would it. I know. I'd be like other people have, have tried to use South Park's jokes against them, and South Park has just been like, okay, dude, we're making a joke about you making jokes and not being good at it. But, uh, I... Honestly, if they're going to do another Mortal Kombat game and try and spin it off of Eleven, the only way they can go is to reveal the other Titans. Yeah. They, they already gimmicked a gimmick. But the but that at least that at least opened an avenue for an out. And maybe this leads all the way back to the one being who is seen as some great evil by the elder gods. Because he was constantly draining them of energy. Yeah, if, um, if you're gonna bring all this new lore up, you better fucking use it. Well, the one being isn't new lore. The one being's pretty well, fucking old at this point. Fair enough, fair enough. But still, you, you, you've put yourself in a position where you've got this lore, fucking use it. Yeah. As for the Titans, um, I don't know where they've been this entire fucking time. And I don't know why they're a reference to Greek mythology. But, uh... The, the big thing there is that it's going to be fairly difficult to do anything else with the time fuckery because pre-Aftermath, the time fuckery technically doesn't even happen. We just kind of... Chronica's defeated. We can try to reset things, and then Aftermath comes in and says, no, 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 you can't reset things without the crown or everybody blows up. <sighs> It's 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 really a big it's a big knot. It's a Gordian knot. And the only blade we have to cut that Gordian knot is oh well the Titans are mentioned, I guess we can use them. It's not a very good blade. We're gonna have to saw for a while to get through that knot. It's not gonna be like Alexander's great sword just cleaving through it in one chop. But uh it's the only out we have. Mm -hmm. Which yes. is shit. <laughs> which is shit, honestly. <laughs> when your only out is pretty shitty, um, it might be better to just drop some antimatter in there, blow the whole place up, and start from zero. Which is honestly the the thing that I feel that they kind of have to do now. Which is really <laughs> bad, because that's technically what they already did to begin with, and look how that Yeah, like... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. There's, there's Monk, no e there's no good answer for this. Yeah. I'm go I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it uh say it right now, Monk. There is no good answer for this. And if we were to ever try and do a reconstruction on this, I would probably give you the middle finger. <laughs> well, fortunately, you won't have to because I have absolutely no plans on reconstructing Mortal Kombat. Good. I, fi I yeah. find that I find that my time would be would be much better served on uh, on other targets. Yeah, th this is a case of we'd we, we'd be better off just nuking the whole fucking thing. Mm -hmm. Especially especially since, regardless if we even if we if we did a reconstruction, um, we'd end up we'd end up we'd end up having a far more con far more consistent timeline and the, and no um. No, no ridiculous ass retcons. Upon retcons, yep. upon retcons. No need to rewind time seventy billion times. This is true. Here, here, here's what I would suggest: if we were even going to consider doing a reconstruction of Mortal Kombat, it wouldn't be just on eleven. 
We would go all the way back to nine and start there and just build off that. Yeah. That at least has some degree of promise, but the amount of moving parts involved because of the sheer amount of characters we'd have to account for makes it unappealing. Reconstructing a fighting game is fucking busted. We really... <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, even on fighting games with the smallest rosters that have separate arcade stories, you're you're fucked. You're fucked. Yeah, no. I, I said, <laughs> even if we were going to entertain the idea, that's what we'd have to do. I didn't say we should do it. <laughs> yeah. I know, I, that's I know, the fourth, I know the fourth snake has, has kind of dipped into this with his Wasted Plotential series, but he's only tackling individual characters, whereas whenever we do reconstructions... We look at a combined whole. Yep, we're much more holistic in our approach. This is true. And that me that and because because of that, much much like the person that we keep ripping off, we're not going to be good with huge casts. We have to account for. Yeah, large ensemble casts uh, do not that all have intertwining plot leaves do not work well. I mean, even when even when we did the Star Wars reconstruction. Um, that had that had a lot of characters, but we were building that around a certain theme. And, it's not and like... we go ahead. And we had a nucleus. Yeah. In order for for some for to do something like Mortal Kombat, one would think, well, the nucleus is the tournaments. Not necessarily. That's not a, that's not as strong of a thread as people think. There's a reason why the series eventually steered away from the tournaments after the, after the first few games, because they kind of realized you can only do that so many times before it starts getting boring. Although, truth be told, the idea of um, of a corrupted Raiden declaring Mortal Kombat on, on other realms, essentially inverting the setup, would have been an interesting thing to follow up on, but they decided to reset again, which is why I think that when they, do, when they inevitably do a Mortal Kombat 12, they're going to they're going to reset again. And actually, you know what you know what I'm reminded of. Um, does anybody remember the new choice game in a lot of improv theater and especially in Who's Line? Yeah, yeah, that's what we're get. That's what we got here. <laughs> <laughs> Just the audience saying new choice every five minutes. <laughs> I am. Um, I think that if we. If we are going to see whatever Mortal Kombat 12 could be, whether they include Aftermath or not, uh, it, it should be a return to Raiden being an evil dickhead and declaring war on a realm we haven't seen a lot of. Like, you realize that most of the realms we've only seen in Mortal Kombat Deception? Yeah. There, look, there's a reason why I have I have a soft spot for the for the PS2 era of Mortal Kombat. Mm hmm And I I think that uh, at this point it would be you know evil evil Raiden with Shinox amulet if we're gonna go that far from the end of ten. Um, they've defeated Kronika, and let's just if so. I'm spitballing here. So for us, for a supposed twelve, let's just say eleven becomes a closed time loop. The events of eleven are wholly enclosed; nothing goes in or out because of the way it all works. Mm -hmm. And so the so the end of ten, where he you know cuts off Shinnok's head and all that fun shit, still happens. And he talks about how he's going to attack Earthrealm's attackers first rather than waiting for them. Um, make it so that he's attacking someplace that doesn't make fucking sense to attack. Uh, I'd, I'd say maybe the Realm of Order. Yeah, I was going to say Order Realm. Mm -hmm. um, mainly because I don't think Order Realm's really done anything. <laughs> like, even Havoc comes from Chaos Realm. But Order Realm is like nothing. And Order Realm would also, you know, make the most sense for someone who's going insane due to the amulet of a fallen god changing him. Um, 
it would it would make sense that he would attack a realm that is probably essentially harmless, mm-hmm. or uh, as uh, Douglas Adams would say, mostly harmless, <laughs> <clears throat> and go from there. And you could you could actually have some sort of heroes rise up in Order Realm, built along by some of the legacy cast. And this would this would actually be the whole passing of the torch that we don't like with the second generation characters. This new generation isn't gonna isn't gonna be related at all to legacy characters. Like the again, the only time we've actually explored Order Realm is in Deception. Yeah, I think and, we only got like one hero, like one new character in the in the PS2 trilogy from Order Realm, and uh, I wouldn't exactly use him for this because, quite frankly, he was a dick too. Hmm. And you just, you, you expand on it from there. It, like, the climax would eventually be uh, Raiden's marching through the realms. He's pro- He probably kicks down Order Realm pretty easily. Because they're just unprepared for it. Um, Chaos Realm likes fighting. So they'll probably just join him so that they can continue to fight. Uh, Nether Realm, he'll probably save either Nether Realm or Outworld for last. Likely Outworld, just because we want that big reversal. Now, instead of Shao Kahn invading Earth Realm, it's Raiden invading Koala uh, Khan's uh, or Kotal Khan's uh, uh, Outworld because Kotal Khan's Outworld is actually very prosperous. I, I would say that given the narrative, outworlds. I would say given the narrative of this new trilogy so far, I would say the Nether Realm would probably be a little more resistant, considering that the Remnants would be a lot more hesitant. Oh, he probably you're right. He'd probably just go in and zap them. He'd be like, you you aren't worth the dust on my boots. You remnants of ages past. Now is the time of Raiden. And just like he'd probably march in and kill everything. Mm-hmm. They're already dead, technically, but you get what I mean. Yeah. And when it comes. And at the ver- at the very least, with something like that, you can. It's a case of building upon instead of trying to reset. Instead of trying to reset from the be- from the get go, because yeah, ultimately, if you if you keep re- if you keep resetting like that, the message that you're sending is what is why should we why should we care about your attempts to have continuity and attempts to have a mythos if you're just gonna redo everything. Ev- um, Every every couple of years, i.e., the same the same critique that people have when it comes to comic books. You know, I I just had a bigger thought. Um, he was being given visions from the future on that time loop shit in nine. Mm-hmm. You could tie in that along with Shinnok's amulet starting to drive him a little bit crazy from ten. To say that the closed time loop of Eleven is one giant vision of the future Raiden got, and he realizes he has to go conquer all the realms before Kronika can get the crown to kill her and prevent that from ever happening. I don't know. Give it something. It then makes Eleven one giant... It, it then turns Eleven into one of the, the one of the biggest cliches I hate most, but would be totally fitting for how shitty Eleven is. But it was all a dream. <laughs> as it's as sad a... when a shitty cliche is actually the best solution. Yeah, this, this, <laughs> is where, this is where I this is where I find myself asking if any if it's if worth anybody, it. Um, well, the well, I already know the answer to that. But more if if anybody in Nether Realm had a series Bible. Certainly doesn't feel like it. Yeah, it doesn't feel like they have any sort of series Bible. Mm-hmm. Feels like they just did whatever they felt like that was tangentially related to the game prior. Or, or, to, or to have actually in a weird way, in a weird way, when I think about it, um, now suppose, supposedly Ed Boon is was a big fan of DC Comics growing up. Oh God, no! Do not suggest what I think you're about to suggest. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. What I'm okay. go, what I'm going to say is that I think he ended up taking the lo- the wrong lessons from comic books. Okay. I thought you I thought you were about to say he was going through his own uh, his own infinite crisis. No, <laughs> oh God, no, no, because Infinite Crisis was canceled before it even launched. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, because let's get let's get the people who did the Lord of the Rings MMO to do a MOBA. That'll go so well. <laughs> but the the big le- the big lesson that the big lessons that he en- the wrong lessons that he ended up taking is things like is things like shocking revelations that are there for the shock and no- and nothing else. The 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 idea of introducing brand new elements of the mythos that are ne- to a mythos that are never touched on again or never even questioned how they interact with everything else the I, the idea of of re- of thinking that you have to reset otherwise you might alienate newcomers and so and so on these are things you know- that we see plenty of times in the big 2 with comics and things we see plenty when it comes to when it, when it comes to the bad mortal combat yeah and to to just briefly touch on i know we've touched on it a few times already the whole alienating newcomers thing mm-hmm. serious with a with a storied history no matter what what medium they're in that storied history does deserve to be acknowledged and experienced within reason I mean, I'm I'm certainly not going to go all the way back to Action Comics one. <laughs> uh, uh, first of all, those are impossible to find and extremely expensive. But uh, it's it's sort of a small primer to entry, not a barrier to entry, because anybody can do it. This is this would be like not Games Workshop because Games Workshop would say this no matter what. But this would be like someone who is a old. Warhammer 40k Lorehound, someone like me, saying that we have to remake all the Warhammer 40k lore to keep from alienating new Lorehounds. Well, no. No. The old lore is there for a reason. It's really fun, too, as we've seen with TTS. <laughs> well, and it... if, I'm, if I may, I have a, bet, I have a better example of, the, of that whole thing. Okay. My my journey my journey through go through going through BattleTech's lore. Yeah, it's just as dense. <laughs> and I, you don't see you don't see me asking for for a for a simpler version of the of um of the lore because I f- because I feel alienated or some shit. If you feel alienated from trying to read the lore, you feel there's too much and you'll never catch up. Well, first of all. You will catch up, unless you just aren't interested. And then, if you're not interested, then it's just not for you. Yeah. And you know, the more I think about it, I think I see where the problem is here, because a lot of the problems that have been happening with the franchise, and some of this is also in the PS2 era, but not nearly as severe, comes out of the fact that there's been a there's been a player missing in this game since '99. I think if you're going to make this next game work, you better fucking bring back John Tobias. If he if he even wa- if he even wants to because I I can see where you're going and what I'm def- what I'm most certainly reminded of is what ha- is what happened after John Romero and John Carmack didn't see eye to eye. Yeah. The, 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 there's definitely a lot of parallels between Ed Boon and John Romero here. The only difference is, is that Ed Boon at least got something decent out and didn't make a complete disaster right away. <laughs> Took he a few also, games before the, the shit started. He also didn't tell all of his consti- all of his uh, constituent customers that he was going to make them his bitch. Yeah, that is that too. <laughs> Though I'm sure if he if he if if, if Romero hadn't done it, Boone would because he he's come off as that kind of person. <laughs> oh, but yeah, like even in the, even the Wikipedia article for John Tobias said that he worked on a lot of the early storyline themes and settings. Like, he's the one that created Outworld and Netherrealm. Mm-hmm. So, why isn't he involved in this new franchise? Like, I, I you know, like, what, he currently, I think right now he's still working in, at Zynga Studios. Get, he's not exactly that busy of a fucking guy. He may just be, you know, collecting a paycheck at this point, you know. Yeah, that's the sad part. <laughs> he, the, 
I think I think this this is this, then the the issue with this, and it's a wider issue that we see in media in general, is twofold. One, you have the people who were responsible for some of the more interesting and consistent world lore and story lore moving out of the picture. And two, you have this insistence among larger studios, and for some reason, I don't know why, maybe it's just the, the vocal minority of the eternally offended, who want to try and make a game that is for everybody. And frankly, as we've said time and again, and I hope that someday, somewhere, this message will get to every little boy and girl across the world. This will be my Christmas present to you, considering the time of year. Not everything can be made for everyone, nor should it. And when it as a bit as a bit of a counter when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to the whole thi the whole thing of to of Tobias and Ed, um, let's cons let's consider let's consider the the um the story that led to Doom twenty sixteen, which didn't have either um Rome Romero or Carmack involved at all. That Car I think Car. Carmack decided to decided to fuck off over to Facebook after Rage didn't didn't take off because it was all <laughs> and yet because a, it was all about the tech and yet a Rage Two still uh still exists a Rage Two exists but he but you know but Rage Two is significantly different from Rage and they're both bad I'd say Rage One... Two is less bad yes but they're still both bad monk. And with, but with but um but when it cut but it it taking those lessons and then and then applying the and and applying the and eventually applying them to Doom twenty sixteen and yes I am full I'm fully aware of the of the of the Doom tra of the Doom trailer that got shit canned and only only was released due to a leak. <laughs> <laughs> Where it where it was gonna where it was gonna end up looking more like it more like a modern a poor man's modern warfare and nobody want nobody wanted that even though some of the assets for it were used in Doom 2016. You know, I, I have to wonder, and this is just me being crazy brain for a second. Do you think that maybe they leaked themselves and blamed it on a leak just to get a free focus group out of it? That's a bit of that's a bit of a 4D chess kind of move. I'm not I'm not willing to say no, but I'm not willing to say yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, it's it, it's a small stretch, but not a not a massive one. But I, we've seen weirder shit happen. Mm -hmm. But no, I guess I guess what we're getting at, what you guys were getting at, is that instead of trying to bring Tobias back, uh, let's just get Boone the fuck out of there. Either either even if Boone, even if Boone is just a consultant, get hit get his particular influence or the or that particular chase out because the the reason why I wanted to bring up Doom 2016 in this regard is that it is not tr it is when it came out it was not trying to be like what came before obviously what came before was Doom 3 so anything but that is already going to be an improvement but it was not trying to be exactly like the like um like Doom like Doom 1 2 and 64 it w it was certainly taking some of the lessons from those games and applying them in a new coat of paint, and do and doing something that works to the point where it establishes its own identity. If you need another example of this kind of thing working out, I think this is the reason why Killer I why the Killer Instinct reboot worked out so well. It wasn't trying to do what came before per se, or trying to call back to what came before. It was trying to do its own thing using what came before as a base that 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 is go, ties back to a lot uh, a common thing we've brought up many a times and something i've always believed in is that you don't need to go you don't need to copy the past but you need to make sure you understand the soul of what made the past work mm -hmm. and i think it i think i think if i'm being if i'm being honest that um 
for for Mortal Kombat to ha for Mortal Kombat to get to gain any sort of footing, it would need to it would need to do something like that. I'm not saying copy Doom 2016, but certainly takes certainly take some le take some le take some lessons from it. Um, I don't. I'd also, I'd also, um, there's one other thing that, there's one other thing I'd like to posit in this regard. Now, I have my own theories on this, but I remember a bunch of NetherRealm stands getting really mad when, when, um, Mortal Kombat was de, was delisted from the, e from the EVO schedule. This was before EVO decided to enter that big partnership with Sony, which is another can of worms in and of itself. But, in your, why do you th why do you think, what would be your theories as to why M why MK11 was not able was not able to able to get a foothold when it came to view when it came to viewership to the point where it got booted from the biggest fighting game tournament in the world. I can hear the gears turning. Well, I actually, actually we we're trying to recover because I uh, almost got disconnected there for a second. The connection. <laughs> we, had, we all did. We all did. <laughs> Everyone went went silent for a bit, including you, Monk. God, God damn it! What I was saying is that is I want is as a capstone. I wanted to go. I wanted to go into um to what why to some of the reasons possibly why um MK11 especially got not got knocked off of Evo. And instead, and instead, was getting replaced with more, quote unquote, anime fighters. Oh yeah, Undernight, like Undernight in Birth. Undernight in Birth, um, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, and the Samurai Showdown reboot, which is really fucking good. They all right. are. Of course, t one of them is is Arxis, so of course it's going to be good. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, it's it's got to be part of the fact that uh. Combat is at once. E Evo's even had Smash Brothers there multiple yeah, it's, times, it's, and it's, and it's Smash had, Brothers. It, it's just that netcode has been shit, and Nintendo keeps getting keeps getting roasted over it for <laughs> obvious reasons. Yeah, but the reason I bring it up is because Smash Brothers is by design and according to Sakurai. A party fighter. It's meant for people to putz around, have fun, and not really treat as a as a high a high skill ceiling Twitch fighter like any of the fighting games we've mentioned, such as Guilty Gear, Street Fighter, etc. Mm -hmm. um, Mortal Kombat 11 now more than ever does not fit any niche. Um, the, the fighting system, while it does have a technical ceiling, it's a technical ceiling you never have to hit. It's a, it's a, it's, and its technical floor is very low. The, the fighter, the fighting is also more spectacle. Things like the x-ray attacks and the, and the, and the, and the, uh, vital attacks and all that fun stuff, those are, those slow down the game. Like there's nothing. Nobody's pressing buttons when when those animations are happening because they can't. It's automatic. There's nothing to be done. And yes, again, going back to how Smash Brothers has been in Evo and how it has attacks like that too in the forms of the final smashes. Um. Often, you know, I, items aren't used, so final smashes never become an issue. Uh, but with with Mortal Kombat 11, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think you can turn those off. Yeah. If you if you can, it's buried it's buried in the options, and nobody and nobody exercises it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so a let's be honest here. The combat in Mortal Kombat these days isn't nearly as flashy and fun to look at as it once was. Mm -hmm. Especially with how constantly dark most of those stages are, um, so it, it isn't very entertaining to watch. It has unskippable cutscene type attacks that bog gameplay, and it has a low skill floor, which is okay. 
and a high skill ceiling, which is also okay, but it's a high skill ceiling you're never incentivized to get to because the low skill floor crutches, such as the X-ray attack and vital attack, are are there and easily abusable. I I think the reason it's been replaced with what some fighter uh, guys I, I've talked to call weeb shit is <laughs> those games also have a low to medium uh, skill floor and a very high skill ceiling but no no uh, crutch to lie on no 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 unskippable cutscene attacks except for the super if you hit with it mm-hmm. and even then you know not always the these other fighters are also fun to watch. They've got really interesting visuals for a lot of the things they do. I mean, I'm going to be honest, Grand Blue Fantasy has never been my thing, but the fighting game is fucking fun as shit to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it lends itself to people who can, due to the sweat of their brow and the sometimes a little bit of dint of luck, uh, can have moments like the most infamous or famous, depending on who you are, uh, Daigo moment of Evo. You can have those in these other games as well. You, you can have those down-to-the-wire, pulse-pounding, holy shit, are they going to turn it around? Holy shit, they did turn it around. What the fuck? How did that happen? Moment that, it, that we've seen at Evo before. Mm-hmm. And you can't have that with, with Mortal Kombat 11, I think. I haven't ever seen a... a a uh, no, you, match like that ever it's really, usually one side is is you really can't you i've talked i've talked about the importance of reversals when it comes to shooters and it applies it applies just as well in fighters it's just that they're called punishes instead of reversals um, yeah cuz i remember um I'm, i remember a lot of people bitching about sprint in the in the in um, in the halo community when Re- when Reach came around, and for me personally, Sprint was Sprint was an issue, but it wasn't the bigger issue. The bigger issue I had was the was flinching instead of descoping. Because a good enough pl- a good enough player will adapt very quickly to flinching, whereas it's whereas it takes a lot more time to adapt to descoping when you're getting shot at. Mm. If somebody's getting shot at, but they're still able to get that sniper shot they're tr- they they were aiming for. Well, flinching doesn't have isn't a strong enough consequence, and the idea the idea with any with any sort of with any sort of fighter or any sort of versus game is a series of moves and counter moves, a, ser- a series of a series of well checks and balances, and with the, with because of the fate because of how fatal blow ends up working, there are there's you have you have very clearly a rich getting richer kind of situation where somebody who has a H has a health disadvantage doesn't have enough doesn't have enough incentive to to try and make a comeback and I don't I don't really see I don't really see comebacks happen often when I did watch of co- now of course of course one of the big one of the big reasons it got booted off is because it's is because it had like one third of the twitch numbers as some of the other games even the even the anime fighters were getting better numbers on Twitch, so there's the business side of it as well. Less tw- less Twitch eyes means less eyes on the thing. Period, which means you're not making as much money. Well, and that all, but again, that all ties into the factors I brought up. You're going to get less Twitch eyes when the game isn't as fun to watch. Mm-hmm. It doesn't ex- it doesn't exactly help that. You're dealing with a game that ha- that has that has decided to go down into a very muted color scheme, whereas its competition d- is, has has um the complete opposite of that, having very distinctive color palettes being used. Even Melty Blood has a very distinct color palette. <laughs> yes, and that's a game that because of the fact that because of, because of how much of it takes place at night, you think you could get away with a darker color palette, but they don't. Waruine. Oh. <laughs> of course, there's all there's also the fact that the man of a thousand the man of a thousand cuts keeps haunting everyone. <laughs> the vampire that doesn't exist, technically. 
but I'd say, I'd say, I'd, I'd say, um, at this particular juncture, there is the possibility that Nether Realm could cor could course correct and act and actually get to the spot that they want that they want that they want to keep chasing. But as long as they keep chasing that that supposed high, they're never going to get it, and they're going to end up getting less and less returns as the years go by. And well, Warner's go Warner's gonna make gonna have more questions if they keep that shit up. Watch as we get another Mortal Kombat RPG that sucks. <laughs> or or worse, they tr or worse, they try and step into my territory again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I'm being a bit harsh bringing up the card game since UFS was not a bad system. <laughs> but I'd say I'd say that I'd say that is a, is a strong enough coda for the, for this particular episode. Um. I do have. I will be doing a few in, a, a few interviews, um, in the in the coming days, um, and of course, of course, of course, more of he more of heavens and heresies in a few days, along with along with a um, along with a bebop project that isn't canceled, <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we'll be, and of course, we'll be back here next week with another episode of Geek Watch. But until then. On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, and join the watch.